Hey y'all, it's Keitha with the Margarita Leopard. Today I'm working on my Harley Quinn Diamond Honeycomb Ombre to scatter. I have made a new tutorial group on Facebook where you can find where I uploaded the design for my honeycomb part of this tutorial. I will link the group in my description. Come be some of the first to join. Now let's get started. You can see me using my tool caddy throughout the videos. I love these. These will also be linked in the description below. I get them from Serious Creations. So I started using a 32 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia Company. I prepped my cut by sanding, then I taped off the top and bottom, and I painted using off-white swamp mud from Miss Lillian's. After that dried, I painted over that with Black Pearl, a metallic black paint also from Miss Lillian's. I will link these below. The plumps from Steel Magnolia will fit 60 to 61 SS16 around. For our math to work, I had to use 60, so be sure to evenly space the stones. What I didn't show was how I turned the tumbler upside down and pushed them down to make sure they're all level, and then I let the first row dry completely, usually about an hour or so, so it's set really good, before moving on to the next row. I start with 5 SS16 Jet Black and then 1 SS16 Gold Back Crystal from Diamond Fire Rhinestones. I continue this until I've gone all the way around. Next row, you cradle 4 SS16 Jet Black under the 5 and 2 SS16 Crystal. After that row, we will add in our SS16 Medium Siam. The row will be 3 Black, 1 Crystal, 1 Red, 1 Crystal, and 3 Black again. Keep repeating until you go all the way around. Next row is two black, one crystal, two red, one crystal. Again, repeat the pattern all the way around. After that, one black, one crystal, three red, one crystal. Now we're deep into the Harley Quinn diamonds. Next, next we're going to do two crystal, four red, two crystal, one red, two crystal, one red, and repeat. Next, it will be one crystal, five red, one crystal, two red, one crystal, two red, and repeat. Now we will be on the downward part of the red Harley Quinn diamond, an upper part of the black. Don't worry, because I will list the lines and stones in the description, and also you can join my group to get the image of my honeycomb file. So next we repeat, two crystal, four red, two crystal, one red, two crystal, one red. Repeat this all the way around. Now you'll do one crystal, one black, two crystal, one red, two crystal, one black, one crystal, three red. Repeat around. Next, one crystal, two black, one crystal, two red, one crystal, two black, one crystal, two red. Keep repeating that.
sometimes you see me using the tip of my um, stick to to move the stones around you you want to keep them nestled in between the row above but you also want to keep an eye on your on your crystal lines to make sure that your lines stay straight and that, that you're staying with the pattern you always want to try to evenly space these because since you did leave a stone out there there are slight uh, spaces between the stones so you have to be mindful that your stones are evenly spaced and that you're keeping the design and the line straight. Now, our next line that we'll work on is two crystal, one black, two crystal, one red, one crystal, three black, one crystal, one red. Keep repeating. Now two crystal, four black, two crystal, one black, two crystal, one black, and repeat. Now we're on the same pattern that the red was on. So now we're getting back into where we're transitioning from the black Harlequin diamond into the red Harlequin diamond. So you're going to repeat what you were doing at the very beginning. Everything is the same. You are doing the, the four black, one crystal, just like before.
So when Diamond Fire Rhinestone came out with their Harley Quinn mix, I knew I was going to have to do a Harley Quinn diamond tumbler. Um, my husband has always been a huge fan of Harley Quinn and the Joker. And we he constantly makes references to it all during us dating and, and various stages of, of our relationship. So this cup really meant a lot for me to make because it had sentimental value. Um, so it, it was, it was a very, it was a very special cup for me to do. And I, I, it's, it's got to be one of my favorite cups that I've done. Um, it seems very simplistic in, de in design and, um, it was, it was not extremely hard to do. Um, the planning, I think, of it took the longest. I really hope that you guys enjoy making this tumbler um, because it really, it really has been one of my favorites to make. Okay, so you see now that I've finished up the Harley Quinn diamonds, because I decided to do this on a 32 ounce instead of a 16 or a 24 plump, then I decided to do another row of just black diamonds uh, with no Harley Quinn diamonds in there. And then as I got down to the halfway point of the black diamonds, the solid black diamonds, I decided to do another layer of Harley Quinn diamonds, but I decided to ship them over to where they were um, offset from the other Harley Quinn. So it wasn't a complete row of Harley Quinn diamonds. It would be offset. Um, I did this because the 32 ounces is um, a larger cup. If you're not planning on doing a 32 ounce, if you only want to do a 16 ounce or a 24 ounce, I would probably advise um, not doing um, another row of Harley Quinn unless if you're if you're planning to do the scatter. If you're not planning to do the scatter, then I feel like the um, double layer of Harley Quinn would look nice on a 24 ounce plump. Right here is where you could see me starting to get back into the design at the top. And this is exactly the same design. It's just shifted over um, instead of, um, like I said, instead of being in line with the others. It, it's the exact same stone count and everything. One crystal, one red, one crystal, three black, you know, it or four black. It, it, it's the same exact pattern. 
Um, I will still list it below in the description for you. So you'll have the exact stone count for the, the plump sizes. You know, I'm just going to add this little bitty in too that um, I made this cup before I got my Dino's hand turner <laughs> that I now use to do my rhinestone cups. And as I'm sitting here watching how I'm holding this cup, I have to say I am so thankful that Sandy and Dino came up with the hand turner because it is so much easier to film me making my cups it's so much easier to actually stone my cups you know it keeps it at, at a perfect level I don't have to worry about only working with one hand um, I will also even though I'm not using their product in this video I will make a link for them below and to their Facebook Facebook group <laughs> excuse me um, so you can always be up to date on when they're doing restocks and, and different things because I'm telling you my hand turner for these rhinestone cups has been a lifesaver. So now we're getting back down into the final um, black Harley Quinn diamond. Um, soon we're going to actually start with um, gradually adding in a different stone here and a different stone there. Um, so we can start trying to ombre into the um, scatter method um, with the mix, the Harley Quinn um, diamond fire rhinestone mix. Um, I do that just a little bit later, but I really wish I would have actually started the ombre a little bit sooner. I wish that I probably would have started it around this mark or a little bit, a little bit after this, where I started gradually adding in a different stone here and there to, um, make it a little bit more of the waterfall feature into the ombre instead of, um, it being, um, a small ombre. So I, I would probably just keep that in mind, uh, when you're making yours, maybe, um, if you like the way I did it, that by all means do, do it the way I, I did it on my next one. I think that I would probably start the ombre a little bit sooner with, with fewer stones up higher and, and gradually, um, come down into, uh, the scatter more gradual.
Also, also I'm going to say that this um, wax um, pen thing that I'm using for my rhinestones, I actually hate this thing. This I used from Amazon and it leaves a really waxy residue on the stones. Um, it doesn't work as well. I usually prefer to use the uh, Crystal Katana um, by the Crystal Ninja, but my dog had chewed it up. So for this video, I was using my Amazon picker and I am not a fan. It works. It does work. And a lot of people prefer them because they are a lot cheaper. But to me, um, my tip wears out very, very fast on those cheap wax ones. So I spend the money that I would have spent on my katana in the wax tips. Um, whereas my tip that I have for my crystal katana, I haven't even had to replace yet. So, you know, that's, that's something else to keep in mind. I, I'll also link the katanas, um, in my description. Here you see me transitioning back just like before where I'm finishing up the bottom of the Harley Quinn diamond and going back into the black uh, solid diamonds. Um, this is also where I get my mix out and I start transitioning into um, adding in a stone here and there of a different color from the mix and 
um, start trying to ombre down into the scatter method. There's no right or wrong. There's no perfect color. You can you can do anything you want to. You can add. You don't have to use SS16s if you don't want to. You can put in some of the smaller or bigger sizes and fit your honeycomb around it. But the point is is to add a stone from the mix and then continue your ombre or your honeycomb and then go around a little bit further add another stone in continue your your honeycomb so it's it's the whole point of the the ombre there's no there's no right or wrong way to do it you can do it any way you want as long as you're gradually adding in the stones and um still continuing the honeycomb for a while. didn't realize the blinds to my window were open right here so if the sparkle from the rhinestones blinds you I'm sorry <laughs> So you can you can actually see me now grabbing from the mix and and adding them in. You see a stray color here and there, um, where I'm adding in an off color um, from the honeycomb pattern, uh, and and that's what you want to do. now I'm just gradually adding just a little bit more a little bit more I am trying to find for me personally I'm trying to find some of the smaller sizes so it it um isn't as hard to work around with the with the honeycomb um and to start off with that that may be the easiest you know while you are continuing the honeycomb it is easier instead of having to try to honeycomb around like an SS30 or something like that to try to uh, work around some of the smaller stones instead but you don't you don't have to So if you notice with my glue, which is liquid fusion, by the way, um, if you notice with my glue, whenever I start actually doing scatter method, I don't, I don't tend to do my scatter method in a line. I will usually, um, take the tip of my, my glue bottle and I will move it around a little bit and I'll make like a small little patch and I will glue it that way as opposed to doing, um, the scatter method in a line. 
Um, I feel like it's not as uniform if I work in a group as opposed to working my way around the cup. I, I, I usually tend to work up and down um, from top to bottom or bottom to top and, and then work my way around in patches. So when you're doing scatter method, it um, there is no right or wrong. It's basically like trying to work a puzzle, which is one of the things that I like about it and find relaxing. Um, there, there isn't a right or wrong way to do it. There isn't a um, preferred way for everyone to do it. Um, some people like their scatter to be loosely put in. Some people like them packed in really tight. Um I try to get mine as close together as I can, but if there is a little gap, it's not a big deal. To me, that's the reason why we base paint our cups is so if there are gaps, then you can't see through them as well. Um, so so don't, don't feel intimidated by the scatter method. Um, it, it's it's not a right or wrong. It's a whatever you feel like doing. It goes anywhere you feel like putting that stone. Um, right here you can see I do usually try to outline the bottom first and let it dry um, all the way around. Um, I prefer to use various size stones around the bottom because I feel like it is um, not uniform and it fits in with the flow of the scatter method that I've done at the top. Um, some people prefer to put all the same size stones, but you, you don't have to, you don't have, there's, it's not a right or wrong. Um, right here, you see me working with my, uh, logo tag. I got the, my logo tags from Mitzi, Mitzi's doodles. Um, I'll link them in the description below. I've used Miss Lillian's paint and I painted on the back um, to help make the colors pop in the logo tag and then I used the liquid fusion and I glued it down and then I glued the stones around it and I usually try to do this early on in the scatter method because if not then sometimes you forget about it or you've gotten too much done and it's not placed correctly in the in the spot that you prefer um, sometimes I even put them on the bottom whenever I do my glitter butt which I actually show at the end where I put the glitter on the bottom of the cup So you'll notice me from time to time, I'll put one of the stones in and I don't like where it's at. So I take the, the metal tip of my, of my wax pen and I either move it to a new spot. Sometimes I'll pop it off and, and move it all the way and, and completely get rid of it because I don't find a spot that, where, that I like it in. Um, I, I swish around in my cup sometimes. Some people will reach in and they'll pick up what they pick up and they'll put it where they put it. Um, I'm more of a fitter. 
I'm, I'm a, this is a spot where it looks like an SS10 will fit. This is a spot where an SS20 will fit. And I will look in my, in my, um, in my stones and I'll try to find a stone that I feel will fit. Like I said, it's like a puzzle for me. So, um, as you get, um, experience doing scatter method, a lot of times you can look at the space where you're you're working and you'll you'll automatically know what size would be the best sometimes I pick up a stone and I think oh well an SS20 will fit here and then I go to put it in and it's a little bit too big and so I'll move it to a different spot or put it back down and I'll grab an SS16 and and that will fit perfectly so sometimes it's just right on the verge of Maybe an SS-16 is a smidge too small, and um, but the SS-20 is a smidge too big. So you pop it in there, and if there's a little bit of a space, it's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. Look at that handy dandy tool caddy from Serious Creations. I cannot tell you how much I love that thing. Um, she has also started making the rhinestone um, holders instead of me using the lids of my containers. Um, it has a plug where you can pour them out. It has a lid on it. They are amazing. She's so creative with her things that cater to us rhinestone um, artists. Um, like I said, I'm going to link her shop below. She is seriously the sweetest person to work with. If you have any adjustments that you personally want to make, she is phenomenal at trying to work with you and trying to personalize something that you want. Also, I cannot rave enough about these logo tags from uh, Jen Clark with Missy's Doodles. Um, she has the best customer service. She is always fast with her shipping. She works with you on what design you want, what font you would want. She's come out with different colors. We talked to her about wanting the mirrored ones. She went out of her way to find mirrored um, acrylic for us. She is constantly working and trying to improve and not that there's any improvement needed. She's got so many shapes. She's got stars. She's got diamonds. She's got squares. She's got off the wall shapes. She's got any shape you can think of almost. <laughs> and I love, love, love her, her logo tags. And I loved the fact that um, this diamond logo tag fits so well with the theme that I was working with for this cup. So thank you, Jen. Also, if you noticed me just a bit ago, I was mixing up some uh, fast set epoxy. Um, I've gotten to where a lot of times I find that it's easier for me to work with the fast set epoxy for scatter method. Um, than it is for me to work with the liquid fusion. From time to time, I still use the liquid fusion for the scatter method, but for me, the fast set epoxy works better for me because I can fill up a larger area of the cup that I'm working on with, with the epoxy. And by the time I get down to the bottom of it, then it's, it's, it's starting to thicken up and it helps, um, hold to me, it holds better. The liquid fusion is, is amazing. Um, but, uh, the epoxy to me helps, helps really hold it in. It helps the work time is a lot better. Um, you, I have anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to work and move around things. Uh, it's, it's really 
it's really a good um, way to work with rhinestones. On that same note, though, I do prefer the liquid fusion for honeycomb. Um, I feel like it's easier for me to work with, you know, pushing out that line of, of glue and instead of having a smear of, of epoxy for the honeycomb. So we're kind of coming into the end of our uh, scatter method here. Um, you know, I've got almost an hour's worth of video here showing me how I, showing you guys how I've done this cup and everything. And, and I mean, I had to filter through and speed up almost over nine hours worth of, of video. Uh, these can be very time consuming, but they are so worth it in the, in the end. The reward is so worth the time that you put into these. Um, and I've already said before that this is one of my favorite cups that I've ever done. Um, it had a lot of sentimental value. Uh, I have to make another one <laughs> because this one sold before I had even finished the design on it. Um, I was telling one of my friends about the uh, design that I wanted to do with this cup and they bought it before I had even started the work, the actual rhinestoning part of it. So I have to make me another one um, and I will soon.
so I'm coming to the end of, of my scatter method. Um, we have just a few more minutes of, of me doing this. Uh, basically, it's the same thing throughout, but I would really like to hear from you guys. Like, what did you like about this video? What did you not like about it? What would you like to see more of? What's um, a different design that you would like to see a tutorial from, um, a tutorial about? I know that you guys have requested me doing... Um, around a name for a honeycomb but if you guys could reach out to me and let me know what you would like to hear uh what what you would like to see then i i would appreciate it you know give me give me a thumbs up on this video um subscribe to my channel um find me on facebook facebook and instagram and tiktok i will have all those linked below um i have really enjoyed making this video for you guys and i would like to continue to make more Here you see me just filling in the whole, the whole leftover spot with epoxy because by this point I'm done. I'm like, we are finishing this right now. I'm not doing anything else but finishing this. And so, um, we, I just filled it all in with epoxy. <laughs>
so after I um, finish up this little spot right here, then I actually do what we refer to as a glitter butt. I use the glitter that came with the mix whenever I bought the Premier Pack. It's actually named Harley Quinn from Southern Bell Glitters. Um, I will also have them linked in, in the description below. Uh, but I mixed Fast Set Epoxy with the Harley Quinn glitter. And I sanded the, the inside rim of the bottom of the cup. And I put the glitter in the bottom and made sure that it was level, left the cup upside down and uh, let it sit like that overnight the next day until the epoxy had cured. And then that was the end of the cup. Here you can see me getting ready to do the, the glitter, but I like to use a nail file to sand. Um, it seems to um, fit perfectly with not sanding on the outside of where I want to uh, put the glitter and epoxy at. And then I just wipe it down with alcohol and fill in with the... Um, fill in with the glitter and epoxy. And then I'll shoot it with my... Uh, uh, flamethrower <laughs> basically <laughs> and uh, uh, get the get the bubbles out and it is good to go after it cures <laughs> 